Hey everyone, um, I decided to go ahead and make another Bitmoji scene tutorial because there have been so many questions about it um, in our um, Teachers Using Google Classroom Facebook group. And I originally, when I recorded the first video, it was just as a quick response to help someone out. Um, and then there were more and more people doing Bitmoji scenes and there were more and more questions and more and more people <laughs> asking those questions and trying this stuff out. And a lot of other things that have come up um, with just making these and how to use them and just lots and lots of questions. So I've been reading through a bunch of those questions on Facebook and I am going to try to all answer all of those in this video. So first of all, um, let's talk about the Chrome extension. So the Bitmoji Chrome extension, this is for your computer because um, it has to be on a browser. And it's very easy to find. You can just Google Bitmoji Chrome extension and you can install it or add it to your um, browser. So some people have said that their district has blocked it. Um, and there is a way around that. You can still put it on your personal browser. And then what you're gonna wanna do is right click on the bit Bitmoji that you want, save image as, and then just create a folder so you have all of your Bitmojis on your computer and then you can insert them. And you don't have to use the extension from your school account, okay? Um, so before I get into actually how to make these scenes, I wanted to go over um, how to use these. That way you can see if you even want to spend time <laughs> making these. Um, personally, I like to use them as agendas. So I post an agenda slide every day. You can see one of my students up here is actually working on his work from Friday, apparently. Um, so his the attendance is there this is linked so anytime you want to link to something you just right click on it and link so that's to a google form um, i link their homework solutions their video that they're going to watch for the day um, the textbook pages they need to do their homework everything is there for them that they need to do for the day and then i just leave this as a google slide i don't save it you could save it as a pdf or download it as a pdf the links will still be um, hyperlinked, but you don't need to do anything with it. I just leave it like this and then I post um, in my class. I just made a demo class because I didn't want to show my class code, but um, then I post in my Google Classroom the agenda and it's dated. I organize mine by date or by day and then they just click on the agenda and they follow that and they know what to do. So that's how I use it, one of the ways I use it. Um, I also use it kind of as like an announcement on my stream. And the only thing that I show on my stream are announcements. So my Google Meet sessions, I use, I do save this one as a PDF and I just um, upload it as a picture that they can quickly look and see, okay, my class is gonna be at this time or whatever. Um, and then I also recently started using it as my thumbnail for my IGTV videos. When you create an IGTV video, you have the option of doing a cover photo. Um, so I've been using this as my um, cover photo for those. Um, you could also use it for the cover of a YouTube video or a um, video lesson that you're using with your students. You can use these scenes in your Google Classroom header. You can use them just on a website or as a title slide. If you use a lot of slides for lessons, you could have like the first slide, you could, you know, jazz it up and make it really fancy. Um, so the first thing I'll just show you is if you're gonna be using it, well, while I'm here, if you're gonna be using it on Instagram, you wanna just look at the size, you can change the size to whatever you want. So if you go to file page setup, I like to show it in pixels. Um, on Instagram, your minimum size needs to be 492 by 762 pixels. So that's what I, I make it. And then I just don't go too high and don't go too far on the sides and it crops perfectly to my cover photo. 
Um, if you are using it as your header, then just know that it is, Google does create a uh, filter across it, a readability filter. So it's almost like having a, um, uh, like a window tint across your header. Um, and people have been asking for that to be removed for over a year and it still hasn't happened. So just know that if you spend a lot of time into your header, you might want to think about what you're putting in your header. Like if you're putting a lot of words, don't make them too small because it will um, be difficult to see in the background. But if you just want something simple and cute just to remind them, hey, click on the classwork tab. Um, you can do something like this. The size that you want this to be, this is for... Oh, for the Google Classroom header. The size that you want this to be is gonna be 1600 by 400 pixels. And then to get it into your header, you have to file, download, and you wanna download it as a PNG. You could also download it as a JPEG, but I think they come out much clearer as a PNG image. So you'll download that, then go to your banner, Upload the photo. And then crop it how you want. I just do the whole thing because I've already sized it um, appropriately for my banner. And then it'll add it there as your header. And you can see, again, it's got like window tint across it so that your class name sticks out more. Okay. Um, so to make these, I'm just going to start with a blank slide. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is, or what I do, I change my layout to just be blank to get rid of the text boxes, or you can click on the outer edge of the text box and delete them. So a lot of people use a, black, a background for theirs. I like to have myself like sitting on a couch or in a chair. So I like to search wall and floor. And then I always use um, like a big whiteboard on mine because I usually want a lot of text with hyperlinks just because of how I use them. So I would pick something that has a lot of wall space with a minimal amount of floor space. But it just depends on what you're going to do. Um, this one looks cute. Use that one. It's got some wallpaper on there. <laughs> um, and then if you are searching for something specific, like I know a lot of you are, like if you're elementary or middle school level, um, or I mean, it doesn't really matter what level, if you want to do something more of like a classroom, you might want to just do a Google search. Um, so like classroom cartoon background. Some people have been suggesting to add cartoon in there. So then you can see there's a lot of other uh, backgrounds that you could use. And if you wanna use these as your background, you can just save it. So it save the image as, save it to your computer. And then when you go to change your background, to choose your image, you're gonna upload instead of doing that Google image search here. I find that Google image search here I can find some things really well, and then other things I have to actually go to Google and do it separately, and it just comes up with a lot more stuff. Um, so upload, and then you would click to add that if you wanted to use that as your background. Okay. So then with adding things in here, so you can go to insert, image, search the web, and let's say I wanted couch clip art. Okay, so let's say I wanted this fancy couch to go with my fancy background, and you see that did not work when I tried to drag it over. Um, some of them are going to have that you can search transparent background. And when you drag it into, let's see if that one works. No, it still doesn't like that one for some reason. If it has a transparent background, if you search it, sometimes it'll have a transparent background and sometimes not. This one actually did work. If you find one that doesn't have a transparent background, and most of the ones I have found, like if I'm in Google Slides and I'm searching, then it works really well. If there is a certain 
couch that I want that I find. So, um, and I try to drag it into, or if I even save it and it just, it doesn't come up with the transparent background. So let's say I save this one. Okay, and I insert this one into here. Okay, notice it has that white background, okay? Um, even if I change my color to transparent in my search, it even says transparent, but that's not actually true. Um, if you find that happening, you can also go to remove.bg and you can upload here to remove the background. And this I have found that it works really great. Now, let's say it cuts out, it messes it up, or it cuts too much out. You can also restore part of it if you need to put part of the background back on it, or you can erase more, or however you want to do it. You can edit it. So then you'll download your new image, delete the one that didn't work, and now I can insert my new one. And now the background is removed. So there's lots of different ways around it. Um, if you find something that you really, really like and it still has a background, it's not working, just remove that background. Now, another thing that you can do, if you go to Format Options, you can recolor. So let's say I found this color, I really like the design of it, but I wanna do a gray couch or whatever. So you can recolor um, to different colors. If you want to do school colors, make it fancy, whatever. Um, another thing that you can do is for positioning, you can move this incremental amount. So if you move it just with your, um, with a big item like this, it's not going to matter, but I just want to show this functionality. So if you move it up and down, it moves it, you know, in, small amounts, really by 10, this one's moving it by 0.9. So if you want to move it tiny, tiny, tiny amount, you can just change these decimals here to move it and make it just move in smaller increments. Okay, so you do have that ability. Um, you can rotate it, do different stuff with it, um, and then reflect it. So someone brought up this, someone was asking how to do this. So let's Google the sitting one. Let's put her on the couch. So the way she's facing now is great. I can stick her, me, <laughs> on the couch. But what if I want her in the chair over here? So then you can reflect. No, I don't want a reflection. I want a position. No, rotation here. Under rotate, you can flip horizontally. So now she's facing the other direction, and now I can put her in the chair. So you can do stuff like that. Um, if you, let's say you want to add a plant. Try to find a tall one. You know what, I already have one saved. Let me insert the one I found I really like one right here a potted plant all right now let's say I want this behind the couch so you can use control down and hit it a couple times until it's where you want it okay or you can right click on it and then order bring to front or bring forward uh, it's already all the way in the back, so these aren't an option. But I like that control up and down. That makes it the easiest. Um, and then when you're done with your slide, if you want to download it as a PDF or um, as an image to add somewhere else, again, this is what you would do in your banner. You would download it as a PNG image. Um, and then you just go to download and save it and then you can upload it wherever you want so i hope that helps and i hope that answers most of the questions that y'all have had as far as how to use it um, how to get that chrome extension um, i know there's also been lots of questions about how to search this like if you want them standing 
um, there's not it's you don't necessarily put standing you might have to say um, you really just have to look through the different ones to figure out what you want um, sometimes it's in the ones that say hi and you you really just search through it um, oh another one is if you want them like sitting at a desk and you just want you want a different top half compared to the bottom half you can clip so let's say I want her legs, but I want a different top half. So I could clip the legs, and I was doing this earlier. Save that. And then I can remove the background. From her. I think that's the one I already did. Hold on. Where's my recent one? This one. So I can remove the background of the legs, re download it, insert that image that I just had. That's my old one. Here it is. Now I have just the legs. If I needed that to be under a desk and I wanted the top half, I could cut the top half off. I cut the top half off. That's terrible. Uh, snip the top half and remove the background and then piece it together to put it inside of a desk because you might want you know, this part underneath the desk and this part above the desk or however. So there's lots of different ways to do things. You just have to play with it. Um, but again, I hope all of that helps and that I answered um, all of those questions that have been popping up. I'll post this for y'all to watch.